so yeah, today, um, I think I'm going to be doing something a little bit different in the sense of like, I really want to give people an idea of what coaching is like, not just from me, but in general, when you're, when you're getting coaching or when you're given space to explore what you're feeling. Um, and, you know, I, a lot of car videos and stuff kind of do that. My podcast does that as well, but I think this will be an interesting place to try to do it. So we're going to do that this group session. And I'm actually, you know, after that disclaimer about interacting with me, I'm, I'm really not going to be interacting with you, at least for the first part of this call at all. It's just going to be me talking or rather not talking, being silent a lot. Um, and that's very intentional. We usually start with a, a short meditation. We're not going to do that today because we're going to do a longer meditation. And I don't know how long it's going to go for, but um, this longer meditation or reflection is going to be the focus of this call. And it's going to be about providing you space and depth to be yourself. To be comfortable just being here, being yourself. Which is primarily what I, I'm getting at on most of these calls and with most of the content I share, but I'm going to attempt, and it might be difficult in the group setting, quite honestly, but I'm going to attempt to give you space here to just be yourself. And I might even, when we get into it, turn off the video because you really do not need to be looking at my mug in order to do that. It's actually can be distracting. Because this is this call is about you. It's not about me. It's not about me teaching you something uh, specific today. Sometimes it is on these group calls, but that's not this. This is going to be a little bit intense if you take it seriously. And if you don't have to take it seriously, but I'm just telling you, if you don't take it seriously, you're not going to get much out of this call because this is not, I'm not going to discuss a lot of intellectual stuff here after I will for the first five minutes. And then I'm just going to go into it and it's not going to be pretty. But it's not going to be ugly either. It's going to be, uh, it's just going to be real. You know, when I talk about going deep, we're going to go deep. Before we do that, um, just to give a little bit of reference point, especially if you're new here, several of the recent group calls, I've, I've been basically going over these three fundamental points um, that I think make our life better, make us feel better inwardly, and certainly enable us to understand these manifesting law of attraction, law of assumption, whatever you want to term it, ideas better. And I want to just briefly go over those three points because they're very helpful to hear again and again, if you've heard them before, and they're also helpful if you've never heard them. These three points, I think, will allow you to uh, manifest a better life more easily. The first one, this is the main point. If there's if you're going to remember just one of these points of the three points, remember this first one that is prioritize and focus on feeling more inwardly at ease and relaxed more of the time. That's the main thing I have to share intellectually with people. Usually when it comes to these, you know, manifesting, improving yourself, um, feeling better concepts. Prioritize 
an inward sense of relaxation. You can be inwardly relaxed while being very active, for instance, working out, dancing, running, playing with your kids, you know, in, in, a, in a board meeting even, or, you know, giving a big presentation. You can be inwardly relaxed doing that as well. Uh, so it doesn't, it doesn't, being more inwardly relaxed more at a time doesn't mean you have to be like meditating more or something like that. But the point is, however you decide to do it, I suggest you start focusing more on prioritizing an inner sense of ease. Some people like to say flow as you go through the day and becoming aware of how difficult that often can be to do. Because it, for almost all of us, it can be very difficult to do. Just doing this is a lot of the uh, manifesting practice for most of us. It's actually enough for a lot of us to see dramatic changes just by trying our best to relax more inwardly. And often that inward relaxation um, is reflected outside in rather cliche activities like taking a nap or meditating or taking a hot bath um, or, you know, listening to quiet music or doing yoga, right? But it's also just, you know, being more in the flow as you go about your normal everyday life. By focusing more on being inwardly relaxed, you can become more inwardly relaxed, right? Point two is become more aware and contemplate more deeply what you really want in life. What you really want in life. A lot of the time, you know, people have these material things they think they desire, like a, a better job or a better house or a romantic partner or, you know, a better body or whatever it may be. And what they really want is not that external change. They want a different inner feeling. In my book that I wrote last year, Money Your Friend, I talk about high ideals and identifying, you know, high ideals that are important to you. That's what I'm talking about when I say, like, what do you really want? Things like, like what you really want, for instance, from like perhaps wanting a partner is love or self-love, right? Or security or a sense of inner peace. So that's the underlying ideal or you know, authentic desire that you have. And we all have desires like this, like deep desires. The second point that I like to remind people to pay attention to is that. Consider more what you really want. And the third point to help make these manifesting concepts uh, work more easily and readily in our lives is simply to, you know, start implementing the first two, you know, focus more on relaxation and consider what you really want in your life. And then the third point is figure out tools and techniques and strengths you have to make it more easily, more easy to do this and to actualize what you want. In other words, like it, you have certain strengths or certain things you've done in the past, even if you weren't consciously aware of it, that help you feel more relaxed that help you feel more at ease, that help you feel more actualized in terms of your high ideals. Start identifying those things more. And it makes this process of feeling better and having your inner and outer world change more simple and more easy by, by doing that. So those are the three points. That's the intellectual overview I'm giving uh, in this uh, session. And, that leads us to something related directly to it and related specifically to the third point. Something that works well for almost everybody in terms of like a strength or approach or tool to better actualize a, deep, a deeper sense of ease and to better actualize and to realize what we really want is to go deep. And the issue most of us have, including myself, is 
giving ourselves the space and opportunity to do that. We have a tendency instead of uh, re really reflecting and going deep and being with ourselves to kind of uh, go for superficial uh, pleasures instead. Not that there's anything wrong with superficial pleasures, but we're much more likely to scroll our phone or to turn on the television or watch something on the computer or be texting with somebody than we are to put all that stuff down, sit down with ourselves and just be and give ourselves space to reflect on what we really want and just reflect on being here right now. If we just do that, we start to get deeper. Giving ourselves the space to do that is hugely helpful to change our lives for the better, in my experiences and opinion. And so we'll do that here for a little bit because often having a coach or a facilitator uh, help you do this, encourage you to do it, makes it easier to do it. It's not that, uh, you know, that person facilitating it is doing anything special. It's just they're, they're there to encourage you to actually do it. And that motivates us to do it. And you're less likely to pick up the phone and start texting or look at your email or whatever. So how do we give ourselves space and go deep? Many, uh, many of you watching this already know. The majority of you already know what I'm going to say, even if you don't want, know uh, exactly what I'm going to say. Once I say it, it's going to be obvious. And the, the answer, the easy answer is that you sit down or you lie down, you get comfortable, you put all the bullshit away, you turn off the phone or silence it, and you are just there. And I've spoken a lot about this. And I'll continue probably to speak a lot about it. Because I think if you just sit, like we're sitting right now or are lying down, and you can do this moving too. It's just you want to be very, you could say, aware of where you're at. So moving can make it a little bit harder to, to do that sometimes. But you could be like gently walking, but usually just sitting in a comfortable chair, maybe lying down, eyes open or eyes closed. I actually usually prefer eyes open, but your eyes can be closed for sure. And you just allow yourself to be here. That's how you do it. And the thing is that most folks won't allow themselves to do that. Because when you sit down like this or lie down or what have you, or are walking, all these thoughts might be there. Thoughts about things you're supposed to do or something you were thinking about, you know, 20 minutes ago or an interaction you just had or any, you know, number of things it could be, right? And we usually play into those thoughts and think we should be playing into them. 
And what I'm saying is you can just be here and the thoughts are just going and it's fine. We don't have to play into them. They're here. We're not trying to get rid of them, but we're also not actively engaging in them. They're just here. It's like, a, you know, music on in the background, just there. And you can follow them or not follow them, but it's just there. Listen to it or tune it out. It's just there. And physically, our body might feel fine, might feel relaxed, or it also might feel ill at ease. It might feel tense. You know, there might be various physical sensations going through your body. And what I'm saying is that you're just here. That's all okay, too. So we're, we're not harshly judging any of it. We're just present. We're present with it. So we're not like actively playing into it or judging ourselves for having quote unquote bad thoughts. The point is when we're doing this, there are no bad thoughts. The thoughts are just going there. They're just going. The feelings are not bad feelings. Like if we feel upset or sad or, uh, you know, angry or ashamed or whatever, right now while we're doing this, none of that's bad. That's just going on. And we can feel it. We absolutely can feel it. There's nothing wrong with the feeling being there. There's nothing wrong with feeling into it if we want even. That's all fine. But the point is we can just be here. So we're here with the thoughts and we're here with the feelings. This probably sounds very familiar to many of you because most people listening to this probably have heard me say stuff like this many times. And you definitely might have the thought or the series of thoughts that what you're doing right now, just sitting down or lying down or walking or whatever, just being here is absolutely a waste of time and stupid. I often have that thought. And what I'm describing is one of my favorite things to do. So the point is that it doesn't matter when we're doing this. You might be thinking this is an utter waste of time. But if we simply want to be present, how can it be a waste of time? <laughs> Here we are. Here we are. We're allowing ourselves the space just to be here. Like literally that's what we're doing. We're just allowing ourselves the space to be here.
So some of you might be understanding what I'm getting at when I say this. Say that we're just allowing ourselves the space to be here. And other people watching this might be thinking that this is crazy or that this is a waste of time or that nothing's happening, that this is kind of boring, that I don't see the point. And all that is fine. It doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong or that there's a point to be had. except for the point that you're here now, giving yourself space. We don't have to use very religious language and we can use less religious language than this but when you hear something like you know god is too pure to behold iniquity or everything is perfection to god or you know everything is perfect to the universe or language like that That's what this is. That's space. If you're using more psychological language or also the language that, you know, Neville was very fond of as well as Kuwait, it's like you are giving yourself and your imagination space by doing this. If you want to keep god or the universe out of this by not judging the thoughts and feelings going through your mind and body just allowing everything to be there you are allowing your imagination space And don't be distracted by me now, because I'm not doing anything special. I'm just doing exactly what you're doing.
you don't need to listen to what I'm about to say, but if you feel lost for whatever reason, remember what I mentioned at the beginning about the three fundamental points to better implementing these manifesting ideas, which is focus more on internally allowing yourself to relax into the moment, into a sense of ease and non-judgment, which is basically what we're doing right now. And then the second point is, what do you really want? What do you really want? When you ask yourself that from this calmer, less judgmental place, something should come up for you relatively quickly and all likelihood. It can be a tangible thing or it can be intangible, but you should get an honest response. Even if you can't easily verbalize it, you should know what you want or what is important to you when you ask, what do I want? And if you still are having difficulty with that, you can do something like, you know, put your hand over your, your heart and ask. What do I want? You could also ask, what do you want of me? Or any other relevant question. And the third point, of course, was identify tools and ways of relaxing inwardly and identifying what you want more easily and utilize those tools. Well, what we're doing right now is one of those tools without question. I've never seen depth and space be a deterrent or a, a negative quality when it comes to this, this stuff. I just haven't. It's not to say that everybody is going to utilize what we're doing right now or you have to like it and do it all the time, but it's, it's effective to some, to some degree or another for basically everybody when they do do it. Again, you can ask yourself if you feel like it. What do I want? You can, of course, breathe a certain way if you like, or do anything physically that facilitates relaxation for you while you're doing this. But my one suggestion in that regard would be please don't try too hard to do that, because you don't need to try hard to do any of this. This is just you're here. And the thing is, you're tapping into this space. You're giving yourself space. But this space you're tapping into is always here. That's the thing. You just have to recognize it. It 
it's not like it's only here when we do this, it's always here. And it's good. If you want to use a spiritual term, you say it's God. G O parentheses O D. You can see we're not trying when we're doing this type of approach we're not trying to manifest anything by asking ourselves what we really want for instance we're not trying to manifest it we're just identifying and being honest with ourselves what we really want right now but we're not trying to change or manipulate external reality by doing this type of activity or exercise. We're simply going deep and giving ourselves space for the sake of going deep and giving ourselves space. And if we do that, we get the good, we get God. And that, again, in of itself is the fulfillment. And from there, other things externally can, can change. But when we do the exercise, that's not the priority, is any type of external change. The priority and entire focus while we do this is simply to allow ourselves the space to, to get deep like this and to just be here now. So you don't have to worry about your doing anything you can't do this wrong if you want to do it. You just do it. You're doing it. This is like when people say, like, you already are, like, you are God. Like, you already are God, right? You already are the universe. Of course, that's what this is. Like, we're taking out the middleman. We're taking out the process. And there's no need to like stay still or anything like a statue. Trying to stay still or not move is just a distraction. You can move. Sometimes it can be very helpful. Like for instance, I often find it very helpful. Earlier today, I was doing this. And it's very helpful, like open my mouth. Like I think it has something to do with the what is that like the vagus nerve the nerve and you know you see often you know like i do a lot of funny faces funny movements but a lot of the movement stuff is it's connected to you know i don't some, something about the body how the body releases tension some people would say it has to do with the chakras and all that stuff too i don't know but you can move it's not like we're trying to be still again it doesn't matter it's just the point is we're we're allowing it, right? It's an incredibly non-judgmental space. If you, you know, if you have to drink water, whatever, do it. But 
the only reason I'm keeping the video on is so you can see how normal this is, like how on how normal I'm acting while we're doing this, how normal you you can act while you're doing it. There's a good chance that your mind is now looser. You've been doing this for long enough. Your imagination might be more active, free, active, just going. Let it go where you want it to go. No pressure. In space. you're having insights that you want to write down feel free to write them down obviously we could be sitting like this or lying down like this or taking a walk or what have you like this and uh, things just pop to our head things just come through our mind or you you've probably heard me say it before like well be sitting like this for like 10 minutes and nothing's happening think this is a waste of time and then all of a sudden out of nowhere it's like boom total clarity or an insight or a sense of peace or a sense of actualizing that high ideal that you want whether whatever it may be you know love health wealth whatever it may be like there, 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 not out there, there, within. Joe Goldsmith talks a lot about how the qualities we want are within us. Like, for instance, he famously says, that supply is an inner quality that we must bring out. Doing this does that. Doing this activity does that. Any inner quality we want. We think we want love, but we don't go out and get love. We bring love out from within us. Or peace, or prosperity, or whatever it may be. by giving yourself the space, the openness, the depth to do this, to just be here, it comes out naturally. You don't have to try for it. It's not an intellectual process. It's a, a process you just feel into by allowing yourself to be there now. There's zero pressure how could you ever ha have to try hard to allow yourself to be you always just are and here we are the whole day trying to pretend be something we're not a lot of the time at least it seems like stressing out about what we you know what we are when we're, we really are always what we are. What really stresses us out is what we are not, because we always are what we are. We think we should be something that we are not. But when you just are what you are, well, the answer is we'll get that.
solicit like this for a few more minutes and then we'll wrap up this main part of the group session and I'll take comments or questions that people have. All right. So if people have questions, they can ask them now. Uh, they can write them in the chat. Or if, you know, again, if you don't, just remember this is going to be on YouTube. So if you don't mind being on YouTube, uh, you can go on audio or video with me. And if nobody's got questions, that's good. <laughs> it's it's also good if people do have questions, just whatever comes up. But it's fine if if people um, don't have questions, it's obviously fine as well. Hello, can you hear me, Tim? <laughs> yes, hi. Hi, um, this was a really, really cool session. I've been watching your videos on YouTube for a while and I jumped at the opportunity to see what this was about and a lot of stuff came up. So thanks for giving us all the opportunity to be here. And I have so many questions, but that'll be like <laughs> too many questions. So I just have one that kind of is sticking in my head is that um, I don't think there's a problem with giving myself space. All this was this session was such a nice reminder because when it started, I was getting so many text messages and notifications. I was like, wow, I can't even be here for a minute without like being bombarded by other things coming in. And with the encouragement you kept saying, it's like, you know what, ignore, ignore, ignore airplane mode. <laughs> and sometimes I forget that I can do that. And um, I'm just wondering though, when you are giving yourself that space, 
sometimes, at least for me, I can fall into, I give myself space and it turns into an hour of just like, I just need space. And then it turns into an all day thing where it's like, I just need space. And then it's hard to kind of, it almost starts feeling like a valley instead of like a safe present space. And I was wondering if you can distinguish that line and how to make sure that we don't accidentally cross it and then almost disassociate from a present state, if that question makes sense. Yeah, it does. I think the second general point that I was talking about to better implement these ideas, contemplating and considering what you want is a good guide to tell you whether you're giving yourself space um, in a way that feels like appropriate or if you're just giving yourself space to, I don't know, just to distract yourself in a way. Because this is not, mm -hmm. there's nothing distracting about what we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, the valley thing, you can expand upon that some if you want to. Um, but this is not necessarily a comfortable exercise. Mm. Yeah. Like I said, it brought up a lot. And um I kind of had to keep, I'm glad you said we could fidget and uh, like open our mouths and kind of hit that nerve you were talking about. Cause that actually helped ground in the present moment again. Yes. But um, so yeah, that, that was helpful. And I guess it's more just like, um, and maybe this is the point that you were saying it felt a little after a minute, it was like a roller coaster of I'm uncomfortable and then this feels great. And then, oh no, this is too self-indulgent. And then no, actually I'm trying to relax into this. So maybe it's more like my own perspective that I need to come to terms with if that's the right, if that's the right expression for it. Generally speaking, there should be some kind of, if you're doing it for a longer period of time, there, there should be a moment of either clarity or some mm -hmm. kind of like, um, there should be some kind of insight. Yeah. And if there's not, that's okay. But if you do it for, I would say at least 15 or 20 minutes mm -hmm. and, there, and there's nothing, that's okay. But it's perfectly fine to stop then. And if you're, if you're doing it and it just, it doesn't, fe it just feels off or something and there's no insight, I would actually at that, in that case, take a break and come back to it later, which is kind of the mm -hmm. point. I mean, this, how, you know, how I usually teach people how to use this and how I use it in my own life. is like, it's something I do occasionally uh, throughout the day or sometimes only one time a day, because I don't have the time to mm -hmm. do it. It's not meant as like you're going in a in your you know proverbial cave and like hiding and going on a meditation retreat. It's fine to do it that way as well, but it's more like something we can come back to and it can it kind mm. of ground it will ground us and also give us um, clarity and insight and inspiration how to move forward, you know, for the rest of the day or for the next day. It's that kind of a device often, if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And to your point, I did get like a really good insight. And I was like, Oh, this exercise is great. <laughs> and so I appreciated that. But it is just, um, I guess the pace of, I don't know if anyone else feels this way, but pace of tasks and life and feeling like you shouldn't give yourself even five minutes, you know, because those at first, when those dings and notifications kept going off, I just felt like, oh my gosh, I, I should answer. <laughs> but I'm glad with your with your coaching, it settled, it like it felt like it settled my brain down enough to be in this space, which was, I guess, also a kind of um epiphany that the world didn't end <laughs> and I could answer those later. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, this is a very intentional exercise in the sense that you are deciding not to you're unplugging basically that's the phrase i like to use like you so you are not checking in i mean that is a, a very helpful thing for many of us to do because we're always plugged in 
And yeah. so this is saying unplug intentionally for 15 minutes now, or, you know, mm -hmm. for 10 minutes, three times a day. And then that unplugged in this, you know, you can actually make that more of a habitual default for how you go through mm -hmm. life. It doesn't mean you don't check your phone or respond to text messages, but um, this enables you to cultivate like detaching yourself much more easily because again, there's so much stimuli, mm -hmm. like you just pointed out, that's just there. So this is very intentionally saying no, no. And it hurts. A lot of times it hurts. We don't want to do it. Like it's like, cause we have that work, especially it's the middle of the day or whatever, or it's, you know, you just got home from work. You want to be texting. You want to be, you want to, you know, mm -hmm. have something, you want to be distracted. And this is like, this is like, no, no, no. <laughs> so, so it's that, yeah. And that, you know, but um, there's a lot of flexibility with it at the same time. I mean, you can, once you get the insight, you can move on or, you know, you, but, but the point is you do have to unplug, you do have to, you know, give yourself at least those, at least five minutes, but I really say at least 10 minutes to just like, I'm detaching right now, unless there's an emergency, which there very rarely is. And I have to respond to something like these 10 minutes. I'm not, I'm doing this. I'm just here. Yeah. Thank you very much for helping me and answering my question. Of course. Thank you for the great questions. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. I have a question. Yes. Hi. Hi. Um, so my question is when say like when you're in meditation and um uh like a negative or a maladaptive core belief comes up, mm -hmm. like sometimes when I'm in meditation, like I'll I'll actually like hear it within myself. Like for instance, something like no one ever believed in me. It's just, it's weird because it like almost comes out of nowhere, but you know, it's like from within you. And I was wondering when things like that happen, what do you do with it? You know, it, it it's like the mind, like, am I supposed to like figure it out or like, oh no. Okay. So I want to change that belief. You know, maybe that's how it was before, but you know what I'm saying? What do you do in that moment when that happens while you're meditating or whatever? Right. The there there's no obviously no one right answer i mean i think the best thing often um at least for me and um i i just works well from like a i would say like a therapeutic place is to get curious about it mm -hmm. and to ask it like if to ask the voice or whatever comes up like well what's this about like i'm here i am like not being judged. I'm not judging this, but this is coming up. Like what's going on here? And, you know, anger might come up and that you can respond, but it's like, again, it's a sense of honesty and open dialogue with like the belief that comes up perhaps. Does that, does yeah. that make sense? Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, um, that's one way. I, I like that way, you know, and that's very similar. Like we, we've spoken on the channel quite a bit about like IFS work, internal family systems, and just being curious with like the beliefs and these, these thoughts um, and getting to know them better, but we can also challenge them mm -hmm. or we, or we can ask like, well, why are you here? Or like, what are like, is this true? Like, is this actually true? Like, you know, like, and you can keep on asking why, why, why? Like, well, if you're not true, why is this here? Or like, all right, well, you're saying this, but I know it's not true. Um, like, I know that like, I am a capable person. This belief telling me I'm incapable. Like, I know I am capable. So why do you keep telling me this? You know, and you can, and you can get curious and that way you can kind of interrogate it too. So you can be curious, you your curiosity can be very friendly and cordial or it can be kind of challenging or, or whatever feels right to you. But it's, Again, I think a lot of it is giving yourself the space when stuff comes up to look at it and not to be like, all right, I have to look at it a certain way, but like, here mm. it is, like, here it is. And, you know, it's there. Interesting. You know, right. and then you can, you know, work with it perhaps better by doing that. Yeah. 
Okay. Thank you. Of That's course. Good. If you have any follow-up questions about that too, that, that, you know, that's, that's a good, stuff will come up in terms of like beliefs and things like that. And um, there's so many different ways to process them, but it's, I do think space is like the general best way for a lot of us to do it. Because then if, yeah. if there's, if there's space, it's a more creative uh, open field, you could say. Uh, it's like that saying was that Zen saying, like the best way to control a cow is to give him a big field, you know, or to give the, mm -hmm. give, give her a big field. Like, um, yeah, but that's, I, I don't know. I, I feel like it's a pretty esoteric, vague answer, but I, hopefully the gist of it made some, some sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, because I noticed there's like one part of me that's like, what is this? I want to figure it out now. And I want to challenge it. And I want to change it. You know, it's just like that effort part of me and then totally. there's this other part that's like be curious about it ask questions and just be patient and and wait for the answers to come like yeah so thank you your answer kind of aligns with what i was thinking as well great excellent mm -hmm. excellent and yeah something like i mean i've been so into joel goldsmith like the last year or two but like he always talks about you know like in the bible like you know the still small voice like that's something else to keep in mind. Like when we're doing this type of exercise, like there is this, sometimes this, like these insights or this thing, this like, yeah, it's, a, it's like a voice or something where like, it's like, you just, you're told something or something comes through and it's out of nowhere. Yeah. And um, it's good to listen to that, you know? Right. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Just reading a uh, text question here. In the beginning, you mentioned that relaxing can sometimes feel like a waste of time. I really resonated with this. I've lived my life waking up rushed to going to bed in a rush. So I'm really trying to take time to just be. It is okay to just be and not always be productive, quote unquote. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean, we're always just being, it's the, that's the irony. Um, we're just being when we're being very rushed and productive, quote unquote productive. Um, but it's, it feels very different, feels very hassled compared to just like, you're here, you're okay. Most of the rush, if not all of it, a lot of the time can just be reduced to nothing you know we don't have to rush as much as we think we do and this exercise enables us to, to see that clearly um how prone we are to rushing you know in the book i wrote about neville way back in 2015 relax more try less i talk about that a fair 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 amount in there very hard to relax more and try less. <laughs> I've learned that more since I wrote that book. So yeah, we'll, we'll keep on going for a little bit longer if people have any other questions, otherwise we'll, we'll wrap it up. And if you have follow-up questions or would like coaching, uh, you can, you know, reach out to me and uh, I will respond. All right. So, yeah, thank you again, everybody, for coming on this call live. 
And uh, if you, again, have any questions or would like to contact me, I can be reached at info at rackwoodcounselor.com. And I hope that um, you benefited from what we went over today. It's definitely the type of thing that um, you can listen to, uh, you know, this exercise again and uh, probably integrate what we're talking about a little bit more and realize each time, if you do listen to this multiple times or watch it multiple times, to realize, become more and more comfortable doing this type of exercise or activity yourself and not judging yourself as harshly for doing it. And like I said, I do this stuff, love doing it and still have thoughts of like, I'm wasting my time. Like, what the hell am I doing? So that's normal. But at the same time, even though that stuff can be there, we also in a way transcend it and get clarity by doing this, you know, regularly. And in my, I just like it. I mean, what I just described to you, this practice, this is the main, uh, I guess you would say spiritual manifesting practice I do, you know, um, I find it very gratifying. And, you know, I've worked with a lot of people and spoken to a lot of people um, who, who find it not only helpful, but just fulfilling to do, you know, fulfilling to do, even if your life doesn't change externally whatsoever. So um, I love, love when I hear stories like that, but people relate that because that's how I feel about it. Uh, yeah. So until next time, everybody be well. And uh, yeah, we'll talk again soon. Bye.